okay here's the second movie and I still have the face over here which I've now turned off I should double click this and just call this um, test face just so I have it named so I know that I can throw it away later and I can throw the guide away now because I don't need the guide and now I'm going to um, close test face and um, turn them off and lock it now again here is the initial first face group okay I even named it face group one now I was very happy I'm gonna go slow here remember that inside the clipping mask should always remain locked I'm gonna click on it to show it to you again the clipping mask or the shape that is going to prevent the color from being seen outside the mask should always remain locked because you never want to turn it into a clipping into um, a gradient mesh and easily with the U key you could so I'm going to now show you the gradient mesh that we have it's the center line lines the left line the right line the top the bottom line now in this case I actually put in a couple more lines but never go more than four or five lines to six lines on each mesh okay let's go to the next mesh how did I do that I just grabbed the group and took it into the new layer icon and then I renamed it face 2 so I'm going to turn off face 1 and I'm going to turn on face number 2 now as bad as this looks I want you to not look uh, how do I say this I'm gonna say it right and I'm gonna turn on the clicky copy whoops that's the clicky to copy for layer so there's the clicky copy let me zoom back out now let me turn it off and on I want you to now look at what I started to do now what do I mean by that if I go into the face group number two and this is going to be a pain to turn back on and off but it's okay I have the clipping mask locked up I can turn it off and you can see by me zooming in and out again that I have the, the gradient mesh lines actually go over to here I'll click on this now now what I want you to see is the complexity between the first one and the second one so I'm going to leave it on so the face group is that's look at I have it on underneath there's the first one here's the second one okay I'm gonna click on the first one so you see that there are my one two three four five vertical lines for the center line the left line the right line I even put in a line on that one now now I'm I, I, I want to turn off this one so you see what did I th say that was next to do in my mind which is important I'm gonna turn on the clicky copy the very next things that are important to me and I want to make sure I'm clicked on the right thing so I'm gonna click on the mesh for this the the next things that are important beyond the shading that was on this side of his face and the hot reflected light on that side of his face were to lay out the um, the wrinkles on either side of the nose okay and then to finish off the chin on the next one so really all I wanted to do on the next mesh was not look at any of the smaller shapes now since I was going to do a separate eye and eye area I don't even see these shapes so what I'm circling I don't even see so if I were to take my thumb or bring it back into Photoshop and just use content aware and take this out that's probably a good thing to do because I don't want you looking at small detail so what is what are the next biggest things well the next biggest things would be to be to, to lay out the bottom of the nose because and let me let me tell you what I'm telling you or let me describe this goes light I need a dark and then I need a light okay that's going to improve and create the shading for the bottom of his nose now I have the light value that goes through this part of the nose so eventually I need to have something right here to do the dark and the dark on both sides but in the face wrinkles look at how it goes light medium and then back to a lighter tone the same thing is true on both sides so if I were to click away from this you can see how this goes light dark light light dark light so what I'm trying to tell you is start looking for the major they don't have to be dark major but the major biggest details 
and then work your way to the small details. What are the small details in his face? In his face, not in his mouth, not in his eyes, but in his face. And in this case, my face included my nose. Were these wrinkles? These are the small things that we need to put in later. So I don't see them yet. Okay, now with all that said, and maybe I'll repeat myself 900 times, let's move on. So I'm gonna turn on, turn off the, the clicky copy, and I'm going to show you that by clicking on this one and making sure that, which is the second face group, and by locking up the first face group, I can't select it anymore. So now if I go back to the clicky copy, I made the decision, look what I did. Do you remember what I said? I needed to put in the light line and then put a dark line on both sides. So if my intention is to eye drop right there, so I can go light, medium, and then light, medium, go ahead and click in the face with the U key, all right? But I'm going to take the U key and click right there. So I don't really want to create that again for you. So I'm going to say test number two so I can kind of show you the difference. Let me unlock the first face group. This is where it gets kind of complex, but you will follow me, I'm sure. So now I'm clicking on the first mesh. Okay, in this mesh, I said, I need another line right here. I need another line right there. So now it should converge and get right where I'm pointing. If it doesn't, I'm going to move it. Now, let me click on the mesh for the second one. And let me tell you what I did. Okay, I can see what I did. I put in this line right here, which was the center. Let me click on the first one. See how there is no line right where I'm going up and down? And there is no line right where I'm going up and down. So what I said to myself was, I'm going to only concentrate on these two verticals and I'm going to now bring his nose and construct his nose. Not the shadow for his nose, but his nose. Now I'll get as close as I can. And I also put in the dark line for here. So I'm going to show you how I did it. So let's pretend I didn't do this one yet. All right, so let me close it and lock it. That's face group three. Um, actually, I need face group two. So let me see what I did on face group two. All right, that's perfect. So um, I'm going to close face group two, and I'm going to pick up face group number one, and I'm going to duplicate it again. Now I'm going to rename it as test number two, so I know to throw it away in a minute. Okay. I wouldn't put the word test in there, but I already have a face group two, so this is my test. Currently, it's just like face group one. So now I can turn off face group one and lock it. And now I feel very confident that I have a safe SAFE, safe one. So now let's take the second one and let's um, make sure I'm clicking on the right thing. And let's now make the lines happen. So I said, I want one to dictate the geometry in this side of the cheek. So I'll move it over. I'll get rid of this color thing. And I'm gonna take the U key and I'm gonna click right there. Now, I want you to see what happened. I, it, it went in in a, in a good place, but this has to be moved way over to this side because do you see how the color actually moves over? The color moves, well, let me show you what I'm talking about. And this has got too close to this side. So what I'm gonna do now is start by moving this over. So I'm gonna take the, um, the handlebars, make them smaller, and I'm gonna move this one over. Now I'm gonna take this one and start to bring it over here so I can now start the process of making the geometry work for the face. You're gonna be moving a billion lines sometimes, okay? Maybe that scared you. I didn't mean it to scare you. Let's now come in here and move this one slightly over this way. And let's make sure that the geometry is flowing so that I can put a bluish face tone here and then the face tone here. So what would I do? Let me turn off the clicky copy and show you what I have. I don't care that it went in with a dark value. I don't care about that because I'm gonna actually now color that. So let's click. Let's take the eye for the eyedropper. Let's click that tone and let's click that tone right there, a little bit up to the upper right. Now look, I have that tone where it needs to be. Let's go down here and click this one. Now let's click to the upper right. Let's now zoom in and click this one. 
and now I'm going to move it where I think it needs to move making sure the handlebars are retracted and I click it right there so now I have actually colored that area now I can start look at when I click away from it I have to now turn on the clicky copy and see what I actually get now it means that that now I can start getting more color involved in it Do you see how this is too bright of a tone right now so let me click this one and now let's click the darker tone here and let's click the tone right over here now I'm not truly concerned that it's not perfect but at least I have the color that's happening well over here now let's do the same thing on this side if this is the dictation of where this is I need to take this distance right here and it kind of tells me it's yelling at me to say Brian put in another one right here okay now what I'm gonna do is see if I'm see how well I did when I really did it so I'm gonna show the face group number two that I finished open it up and I'm gonna click on the mesh now look at how I have another line which dictates where that tone goes now I really want to take that I need to um, um, I have two things selected so I'm gonna click away from it so I don't confuse you and this was where um, my second line went okay let me see if I'm close enough where that one went all right actually I actually took this one over to this side so I'm actually gonna bring it over and I know why I did that because um, I wanted the color to come up through here so um, I'm gonna actually make a decision I did everything right on the bottom but on the top I didn't need to force it over because there's no big forceful things happening over here so let me um, lock up number two go into my new face number two and click on that mesh again okay face number two um it's not clicking um let me see why that's not turning on i must have locked up something here nope uh, let me go back maybe i unlock something okay let me zoom in let me get the direct selection tool oh yeah, i was able to click on it all right so what i want to do and i almost did it right is this one should have moved into the center this one was just about right whoops I have to Z back, click it once with the direct select, now move it over. No, I did that one right. Now, what I want to do, and I'm going to show you what handlebars have to do with the face, is I'm going to actually click it right over here. Okay, so I'm going to take this one now, and this one's going to dictate um, where the color goes here right straight through his face. This one actually went in beautifully. Now I'm going to pull this one over to the left, and now you can see if I take this and maneuver it, I'm now going to color it. Let me turn off the clicky copy so you can see what I have. Now, I'm going to take this one, eye drop it with the eyedropper right here, and I'm going to show you how to actually start the color process. Now, I'm going to take this one and click it right there. Eventually, I'm going to have one come through here, which is going to give me that lighter tone in the cheek. But, and here's the but, I want this color to be that color. I'm now going to pull this handlebar a little farther and pull this one a little farther over each other which will make the color transition pretty darn good in that area now do you see how I have to pull the color transition to the right so I'm going to turn off the clicky copy and I'm going to pull this one over and I'm going to pull this one back and now I'm going to pull this one over you know what it's not moving because I have something else on I need to turn off the face group number two now meaning I have the face group two on and I had the face group test on number two so I needed to pull this over okay so so far the only thing I have on is this one right here now let's turn on the clicky copy now can you see how when I take this and I click on this point look at the division of color between the dark and the light let me turn off the clicky copy I want the dark to be more pronounced over to the left in this case so what do I do I turn off the clicky copy and I grab this handlebar and I move it over now I retract this handlebar now do you see how I have forced the dark over to the left and I forced the light over to the left as well and now you can see how I've started to get that working really well so now 
there are my left and right sides. Now let's do the nose area. Again, I'm going to make sure I turn this off, but this is what my original number two looked like. See how I started to dictate where the nose goes? So now I need to click on, I'm going to unlock it, and I'm going to click on this one. Oh, dock on it. I need to turn that to test off. So look at how I have started to lay out that nose beautifully. So now let me click that on, which is the clicky copy. See how that now is really following the nose area? Now obviously with this line that's curving down, I had to marry it with a line that was curving up for the nostril on this side. I had to marry the dark with a line that was coming up on this side. So I could frame the nose. So I have one right there, I have one that I already had, and I have one on the bottom. So let's do both. I'll click one a half an inch higher and one right down here on the one I'm getting. So now I need to <laughs> turn off face group two so I don't click on it anymore. That's what I did wrong in the first place. And turn the face group two back on and click on the mesh. Now I'm going to click on the clicky copy. Now, if I take the U key, I need to click a half an inch higher right here. I need to click right down here. I also need to click right over here so that I can start to build where the nose is actually going to be curved going up like this. Now look what just happened. It didn't go in this formation that I need it to go in. It curved that way. I'm not going to panic. I'm also going to click right here where I know it needs to go and now realize as I'm clicking, I'm coloring. Whoops, so let me turn off Facebook. And now let me redictate where those go. Now before I do that, I want you to see what the second one did look like. So I'm turning it on and I'm clicking on the mesh. Now do you see the difference of what I just did? So now let me click on this mesh again. Look at how there is what I have. And I know that this line needs to move over to the left. And here is what I made it into. So now let's mold the one that I just did into this one. I should have turned those off. I'm sorry. Let's now, um, let's now um, turn, um, lock up the face group number two and turn it off. And now let's click on the mesh for the one that I need to now move over. So let's get close. Let's click, retract the handlebars, retract the handlebar, and move this one right to here. You never put it on the edge of the color. You put it where a non-literal center of the color would be. So now I'm going to put this one right in the middle of that dark. Now let's start to mold this. Okay. Now I'm going to move this one right down here. And then we're going to take this and we're going to move it over to this side. And now look at what I want to do. I actually want to curve this one over. So now I'm starting to get this curve of this darkness. Do you see how two lines are making it into one line? Now I'm going to pull this one over and pull this one over. And do you see how I'm laying that out beautifully? Now I'm going to pull this one over and do you see how I'm laying out that line nicely? Let's do the same thing to this side. I do want to examine what I did before. So I'm going to click on the mesh. I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to click on this mesh. I was holding the command key. Oh my goodness. Um, so let me now click away from everything. Let me turn off this face group. So let me click on this one so I can see it again because I want to be accurate with you. And let me click on this one. Okay, I actually pulled that one down a little farther. Doesn't matter, it would have been fine. And actually, I didn't get as close as I needed to get, but that's actually fine. So I'm going to pull this one down just a little farther. And I'm going to move it out. Now, what I really wanted to see when I did this, let me just give me a second here, was this line went straight down. And I did it because I wanted to just start to match the geometry of the above mouth area as well. And you know, that's a neat thing to show you that one mesh 
can do the same thing as another mesh, but they don't have to be as perfect. There is no word perfect when you come to the geometry of a mesh. It's can you get the colors to match? So this is the one that I had finished. This is the one that I'm working on. So I actually said to myself, um, this line here needs to pull over and I need to actually move the geometry straighter. This one needs need to lock that up or turn it off. This one needs to pull over and now I can just get that one to be a little bit more relaxed. Now let's do this side. So this one needs to move over right to here. This one needs to move over just like this. This one right here I need to retract the handlebar and I need to pull it over to get that. Now let's move this one over and you can see how very nicely I'm starting to lay out the, the right side nostril. Now let me move this over just slightly and let me move this over just slightly and now I need to move up with it. I'm going to turn on face group 2 and turn on this mesh and you can see, oh boy that is a pain. Let me turn that one off. And now I need to see something. I did not. Okay, there's a, um, it's going to come up to a point where I want to show you how to break a mesh. And I actually did that. Um, this mesh line right here. No, I did not break it yet. Okay, that's good. So let me turn this off and I'm going to, I'll show you what I'm talking about right now so I don't 100 million percent confuse you. There are some times that you want to break a mesh line and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Sometimes in a mesh you don't want the parallel um, capability of, of two handlebars to remain. You want to break a mesh. You want this line to come over here and then you want this line to go in a little bit of a different direction here. So you click the P key for the pen you hold the Alt Option or Alt key and you can see it turns into a Convert tool. And you can actually convert this one on this side to do something slightly different. You have to be careful though and not go too drastic or this line right here in, and the breaking of that geometry will make any other line that you put in later actually have a little right angle to it or a little, um, oh it's hard to, a little corner aspect. So I'm going to command Z back or control Z back so it's still connected. But now let's finish this off. Let's take this one and let's have this one come up a little higher. Let's have this one retract over here. Let's take this one and move it up and down a little bit. And now let's go a little bit closer to it and pull this one up and over. Now let's do the same thing here. Let's start to make that nostril work. So look at how I'm going to make this nostril work by grabbing it up like this and pulling this down like this. Now look at how I'm starting to make that geometry work real well for that area. Not only did I dictate that line, but I dictated the other the, uh, not only did I dictate this geometry, but look at how nicely I made the geometry for his nose. This one should actually come up a little higher and this one should pull out a little farther. So now, that very nice. And then I remember um, I needed to pull this one over to this side and go a little bit straighter to match this color that's coming down. And then I want to retract the handlebars. This should come back over to the left and go down like this. Now look at how I've started to lay out that geometry. Now, notice how instead of having one, two, three, four, five, six points on this line, I now have all of those points here because we increased the geometry on the nose. Now what I want to do, and again I'm going to go back to this mesh here, and I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to select it. Do you see this line that I put in right there? I'm now going to take the time to actually put that line in there. Let me click it without anything else selected. Look at how now I want to actually dictate the bottom of his chin. So I'm going to turn off the face group number two. We're going to click on the mesh for that one. Again, it's doing the same thing. Okay. So let me click on this. I don't know why that's not selecting. That's probably an error in Illustrator, but that's okay. Let's take the U key and let's move in and let's now click on this line and let me see where I get. Now, 
that one went in beautifully because I had placed this one in here beautifully, but this needs to move slightly down. This needs to move slightly down. These are converging too much towards the, you know, they're pinching. So I'm going to move this one over and retract the handlebars. So now I can pull this one down a little bit farther. This one needs to pull down. This one needs to pull down. This one needs to pull down. That is not bad on this side. This one needs to pull over. Look at how I've spaced these out nicely. And now this one can pull up. And then look at how I can start to turn this one and then make this handlebar actually come a little closer. So now look at how the darkness actually is formed with two lines. There's a horizontal line and there's a vertical line. Now, I'm gonna click the clicky copy off and you can see how terrible the color is. So I'm gonna take the clicky copy and now look at how I have the color all messed up throughout the nose. Now let's start the color process. So let me turn on the clicky copy again and let's color this whole thing correctly. So I'm gonna start with this one. So let's take this one, I key for the eyedropper, click the command or control key, click the point and I drop next to it. Hold the command or control key, click the point, I drop next to it. Click the point, I drop next to it. Something is unlocked and I don't know what I have unlocked. Nope, nope and nope. So. Let me click this. That shouldn't be turning off. So I have two things um, selected. Let me make sure. You know what's the problem has been? The clicky copy was unlocked. That was the problem the entire time. That was my problem. So never unlock the clicky copy. And I'm doing, I unlocked it because I'm in the file and I'm working on it on a tutorial movie. So I'm gonna grab that color, grab this color and click with the eyedropper grab that color. Now look what I have. See how I've started to dictate that nose? Now, I don't care about this line. It's going to be this line I'm going to put in in the next mesh. Do you understand what I just said? So only color what you need to. Now look at how I'm going to retract that handlebar and just have this start to form that really nice curve. You see how I did that? See how this comes up and it starts to form the curve? So now, I don't want this one to be dark right here. Actually, I think I do. It doesn't really matter if I do or don't. I can actually pull this one up to be the light brown line. Then this one should pull up to be about right there. So, um, but I need to color it. So now let's go over here and let's see the colors that I have. This one should be slightly darker. And let's now recolor this one to be right there. Okay, that's working real good. Now let's click, take this one and let's look at what I have. Okay, let's move back. Okay, this one is actually going to be that color right there. This one's going to be the dark value right here. So it maintains the nice darkness all the way through. This one should probably be the dark value. So I'm going to move this one down into the dark area. And we're going to just have consistency here. So look at how I'm redrawing this to come down into the dark area. So now when I click this and I make it dark, the dark is going to be too big. But I'm not going to panic. See how the dark is way too wide? It's okay. I'm all right with that. Because the next mesh is going to take care of that. So now, I think that's a really good way to show you how to start to build to the face. Now, this is really harsh. Let's now take, but I don't care. Now, let me come in closer here and let me click on this and I need to now color these. So let's just click quick, quickly color these as I move across. So I click with the eyedropper and color, click and color, click and color and keep on going all the way across. Be very patient with Adobe Illustrator. Now this should probably have moved down into the dark area right here. So this should move down, this should move down, this should move in. So now I'm maintaining where that darkness goes the entire time. So let's click it and now let's turn off the clicky copy and now let's click away. Uh, I missed one. I just missed doing that one. So let's now take this one and now let's zoom in and color it. I'll click to the lower right this time. And now let's click away and let's see what we have. 
I click this right here and you can see how nicely I've started to lay out my colors. Let me see if I have anything that I need to click here. I'm going to turn on the second one and see if I put a line going across, which I very well could have. So now let me turn this one back on. Let me click on that mesh. And no, I did not do that yet. Okay, so I'm going to go to the third one. Now, I'm not going to do this for every single mesh. All right, meaning create the new one. So what I should do now is save the file. Let me take the time to have this file save. All right, I'm going to turn off my test face and I'm going to close everything now. And now I want to turn off the clicky copy and I want to go to the third face. Now what I'm going to do is show you how the faces build each other. Okay, they build on top of each other. So let me turn off number two. Let me go to number three. Now look at the difference between two and three. I'm going to turn off number three and you can tell that number three, I'm going to let you see the nose area. So I'm going to open up number three and I'm going to open up number two. Now, here are the mesh lines for number two. You can see the complexity of them. Now I'm going to turn on number three and show you the mesh lines for number three. Count how many lines are here. We have one, two, three, four, five. So now let's take, turn it off, turn on mesh number three, and let me click on the mesh for here. So now instead of one, two, three, four, five, look at how I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I've added about six to seven to eight more lines. And now every time you add six, seven, or eight, or nine more lines, make a new version by dragging it into the new layer icon. Now look at how I was able, if I turn on the clicky copy, to really start to dictate that nose and the areas to the left and right. Now, I didn't care about these yet and how this dark swatchy thing is here. I could have recolored it, but now let's go to number four. So I'm going to turn off number three or turn off number two. Let me turn off number um, three and go to number four. Now, I'll click on the mesh for number four. Now, look at how I have colored a lot of this beautifully in here. Now I got a little streaky in here and there is a technique to getting rid of streaky. Now let me turn off the turn on the mesh so you can see just how that nose is starting to really take over. Now the way to get rid of streaky is to click on a mesh. Now I'm going to show you a little technique. It's too streaky between here and here. So I'm going to take this with the eyedropper. I'm going to click this point. I'm now going to click a little bit above that point. I'm now going to come over here and click a little bit above that point. I'm going to click here and click a little bit above that point. Click here and click a little bit above that point. Now let's go the other way. Let's take this one and click a little bit below that point. Now let's take this one and click a little bit below that point. Let's take this one and click a little bit below that point. Let's take this one and click a little bit below that point. Let's take this one and click a little bit below that point. Now let's take this one again and click a little bit above that point. Let's take this one and click a little bit above that point. Again, above, again, above, again, above. Now to select all is Command A. If you want to see how you're doing, go Shift Command A or Shift Control A. Whoops, that was the wrong thing. I, I went Shift Command S. I meant Shift Command A and you can turn off the mesh. Now look at how I have a much better blend in that line that was right through here. Now imagine doing this to all of these. Now let's go to number five so you can see the difference. So let me move back out. Let's click away from this and let's go to number five. So let me take number three and close it. Let me take number two and close it. Let's take number four and close it. 
let's take number five and turn it on and now you can see how I have indeed made this much better over here and if you can see the clicky copy and you can see what I'm doing look at how I have a really good value set through his nose and his cheeks now let's take number five and let's see the complexity of number five now I've started to add a lot more lines to dictate the geometry now look at how I've started to lay out the top and bottom geometry for his little wrinkles underneath his eyes right here and most of the things that are happening here now what I can do is I can do something that I want you to see and then I'm gonna go to the next movie so I'm sorry I turned on his eyebrows I meant to turn off the clicky copy because I want to do something and put this on the screen and I want to see if I can do this in the right way um, I'm gonna turn on each mesh as I go up and I'm going to go from um, back to, to, to one let me close it and let me turn it on there is the first one here's the complexity okay I need to unlock it there's the first one and there's the complexity um, I want to zoom in just a little bit I guess I'll go like this here is the second one and here is the complexity here is the third one and here is how many lines I added here is the fourth one and here are how many lines I added here is the fifth one now let me turn this off big difference between the fourth and the fifth one here's five here's four here's four off there's three so three four five six look at how that even that out look at how I cleaned up a lot of that blending see in his chin how that looks a lot better because I started to eye drop across these points here here's number seven now look at how I'm dictating not the mouth but the shading for the mouth so here's the clicky copy see how I'm laying in the shading for the mouth now let's go to number whoops let's go to number eight or yeah here's number eight now all I did on number eight let me zoom into his lip here's number seven now if I turn on the clicky copy you can see that I need to get light values all through here so let's click away and now what I should do is click on the complexity for number seven and then the complexity for number eight so here is number seven now please only concentrate on let me turn on the clicky copy look at how I need to get the lighter value right where I'm pointing do you see that point that I'm pointing to right there that point goes lighter now follow that in that general area let me go com control shift a to turn it off let me turn on the clicky copy now I'm turning it off so I can go down to number eight and now look at the difference that I'm getting inside of here let's go to number nine number nine smoothed out his left and his right side so here is let me turn off number eight actually let me turn off number nine so what I did was I realized I needed now some light values on either side of his face I'm starting to get into the small details of color here's 10 okay I said that his hair let me turn on the clicky copy let me turn off 10 and let's go into the clicky copy now do you see how the shadowing of his face needed to get darker all the way where his hair was going to be remember his hair goes on top so if I turn off the clicky copy I need to now get darkness on this side of the face again look where I need to get darkness I'm actually pointing on it right there so if I turn this off I now can show you number 10 and here's 11 here's 12 here's 13 okay 13 is starting to get into those little face wrinkles let me I'm gonna see if I can zoom in to the bottom without making this crash okay let me move up and let's zoom into the bottom again okay now let me turn that off look at how 
I started to lay out where the little wrinkles were. Now, so I'm showing you what I did. I'm going to now show you the complexity of what I did. And remember, when you make copies of these meshes, you know you're safe because you have a safe one that's there. So before I get into where those were, here's the complexity of the chin area. Now, if I zoom in a little bit more, this is what the decision I had to make. Look at when I turn on the clicky copy. He's got little wrinkles. Now, I had to make a really big decision here. I want you to see the change in geometry. It was at this point that I realized that that geometry needed to move down for that wrinkle. Now, I'm predicting what I did, and it's been six months since I did this, but I'm predicting that I took the time to move each one of these points down to follow that geometry. So, let me turn this off. Now, I'm going to click on the complexity for that mesh on number 12. So let's turn this on. And now I'm going to go Shift Command A. Please watch how these lines, I hope, move down. So I'm going to go Shift Command A to turn that off. And I'm going to click on the complexity for the mesh here. Now here's the complexity for the mesh here. Here's the complexity for the next mesh. So I took the time between 11 and 12 to do all of this. And if I messed up, so what? I could throw it away and start on 12 and start on 11 again by duplicating it. And that's the secret to meshing. Don't start at the beginning. Start at the one version back that you voted only added eight or nine lines to it. Now here's the next one up. So now let me turn it on and here is what I did. Now look at the complexity of that mesh. Look at the complexity that I now made for these little lines over here. I realize that this is pretty complex, but I think you can follow it. So let me turn this off again. Let me turn them on and on. Now you can see how I'm starting to get the wrinkles in here. Here's 14. Now I'm smoothing out the wrinkles on that side. Here is the gradient. Here's the clicky copy. So those are subtle things that are going on in the face, but they're things I wanted to include. They're the small things. The small things get done at the end, towards the higher numbered versions for the face. I'm turning it off, and I'm going back here, and let's go to number 15. So number 15, I can zoom out. The next movie is going to be about the face detail, but you don't want to do the face detail I'm trying to center that and it's going really slow. Okay, let me see if I can, whoops, went up a little too high. You have to be very patient with Illustrator. So here's number 15, here's number 16. Okay, I really smoothed out his forehead. Of course, I have to move this down. Here's number 16 and number 15. Now here's number 17 which now gets all this beautiful value in for where the under hair is going to be. Did you understand what I just said? Look at when I'm turning this off and on. Look at how those values are correct. Notice how I don't want you looking at the eyes. I don't want you looking at the lips. You can look at the nose and the forehead values and the cheek values. Look at how close I am. Look at how pretty that looks. Now, um, I, on one of these that I have on, which I think is number two, um, I turned off. You know, I'll watch. I'll go back because I, I, I knew on one of them I had the clipping mask off. So let me take the clipping mask and turn it back on on the lower one. Now I'm going to turn it off. Now I would never have all of these on. If I'm working on 18, I'm only going to probably have 17 on underneath. I'm not going to have all of them on. Goodness, that's why Illustrator is taking so long to do the things I need it to do. So now let me turn on the final one. And the final one was simply smoothing out this area. Look where I'm circling. The final one, I did not like how that wasn't smooth, so I made it smooth. There is your final face. Here is the final complexity. Here is the beginning complexity. Here is the final complexity. You better have 7, 8, 9, 10 different versions of this mesh, of your mesh, for your face. Now I can go to Leia and show you exactly the same thing. Now if you bear with me, I'll close Han. 
I'll turn off Han, I'll open Leia, I'll move over to where Leia's face is. Let's take that same theory. Let me just zoom in one. I think that's enough on the screen right there. Let's open up Leia. Let's turn off her left arm, her sleeve, her braid on the left, her braid on the right, her upper hairs on her face, her eyelashes come off, her eyebrow hairs, the hair in front comes off, the ears come off, the texture is already off, the right eye's off, the left eye's off, the mouth is off, there's my face, the right hand is gone, the left hand is gone, the right vest, the hair under the face is gone, the neck is gone, and the top hair is gone. There is Leia's face. Here is the clicky copy. I'm turning it off and on. I chose to do her nose too, but look at how I pretty much blocked in the values for the mouth. Okay, now let's open up her face and let's see her face. Look at how many I have. I didn't know I had 16, but I have 16. So let me turn this on all the way. And now let's turn this off all the way down to this one. Here is the first one. Now I obviously inside there have the clipping mask on. So I need to unlock the clipping mask. Look at how that is the center line, the left line, the right line, the top and bottom line. Same theory, exactly the same theory. Look at how the clicky copy is exactly what you need it to be. Okay, now I'm gonna turn off that. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna turn off the clicky copy. Now I want you to see, I'm gonna try to do it really cleanly. Okay, number two the mesh for number two. Oh, I did it again. I need to go into here. I hope that they're all, nope. I'm sorry. I need to turn them all on and so I can do this in the right way. I need to make sure that the clipping mask is locked up. Okay, let's close it, open it, lock it, close it, open it, lock it. I, I should have already done that, but you know what? That's what Illustrator does to people. And I hope that um, this movie's not gonna be nine million big gigabytes. But you know, I love having you see the torture that you can go through. And it's beautiful torture. I absolutely enjoy it. So I'm, I'm almost down to the bottom. So just please bear with me and I'm gonna save the file, which you should do after every single version of your face mesh. As a matter of fact, whoops, I think I missed one. And I think I missed another. Nope, I did not. Okay, let me go in here and now let me lock. Okay, that one's good. Let me make sure that one's good. Okay, good. I'm gonna save the file. Okay, now I've obviously turned them all on, but I'm going to click on her, um, I'm gonna turn on her layers as I need to. Okay, I can do it now. And I'm going to go back to this, so again, there's the beginning one. Let's click on them. I'm turning it off. Let's turn it on. And here's the next one. So here is the mesh. Let me turn this one on. Here is the mesh here to here. Okay. Now um, it should have deselected. Did it deselect the other one? Let me click away from it. One, two. Yeah. Okay. Let's turn on number three and click to it. So now you can see how I've started on number three, I started to lay out that nose. But in each case, you're only seeing six or seven or eight lines go in. Here's number four, and here's number four's mesh. Number five, number five's mesh. Now I'm gonna start over because I'm gonna click away, but I'm not going to now click on the meshes. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Here are the meshes. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, five, four, three, 
two, one. Now play that several times if you want to. And you can see that go. In fact, I'll turn on now them in order. One, let me hit the A key and click away. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Let me save the file again. And now we'll go back to Han and I'll show you how I did his detail on his face. Go to movie number three.